Welcome to Way to Be TV, where there's a better way to be than atheist or theist. My name is Elise Elrod. It is Thursday, March 3rd, 2016. Joni and I co-host Way to Be TV. She'll be keeping us abreast of the chat room activity tonight. I'm looking forward to this particular show. The, the infancy gospel of Thomas um, was probably a second century gospel. It is thought to be one of the earliest infant Gospels. It was long about this time, at the end of the first century and in the, in the beginning of the second century, that these stories about Jesus' childhood began to circulate. The inf infancy Gospel of Thomas begins, I, Thomas, an Israelite, write you this account, that all the brethren from among the heathen, or Gentiles, may know the miracles of our Lord Jesus Christ in his infancy. And so the for, first story in the Infancy Gospel of Thomas says, At five years of age, on the Sabbath, Jesus was playing by a stream. He spoke a word, and some clear pools of water immediately formed. And then he made some clay. From the clay he made twelve sparrows. There were other children playing with him. And someone ran to Jesus' dad, Joseph, and told on Jesus, because he was doing this on the Sabbath. He said Jesus had violated the Sabbath by making the clay figures. So Joseph found Jesus and asked him why he was doing something unlawful on the Sabbath. Jesus clapped his hands and the clay birds flew off. They were all amazed and began reporting what they saw Jesus do. There was also standing there the child of a scribe. He took a tree branch and punctured the dammed up water that made the little clear pools. And Jesus got pretty angry. He withered the boy up like a dead tree. Then Jesus went home. The parents of the dried up child brought their child in their arms to Joseph. They asked him, why do you let your child do such things? That's the end of this first story. There's no resolution mentioned to the problem. The second story in the Infancy Gospel of Thomas. The young Jesus was walking through a village, and another boy bumped into him. Jesus got angry about that and said, I don't know where you came from, but you're not returning. Then the boy that bumped into Jesus fell over dead. The parents of the dead boy found Joseph. They told Joseph that it would be impossible for his family to live with them in that village unless they taught Jesus to bless and not curse. The parents said, Jesus is killing our kids. So Joseph got Jesus off to the side and he asked him, Why would you do such a thing? Are you making people hate us? Jesus said to Joseph, I will be silent for your sake. Even so, Jesus said, they will not escape punishment. And then those who told on Jesus to Joseph were struck blind. Hearing about this, Joseph violently twisted Jesus' ear. At this point, Jesus really gets ticked off. He tells his father, You have not been smart. You know I belong to you. Don't give me a problem. It sounded almost like a threat to me. The third story in the Infancy Gospel of Thomas, this was the first of three attempts in this gospel by Joseph to get Jesus a teacher. There was a teacher named Zacchaeus. He had overheard Jesus talking with his father. Zacchaeus was moved by what he heard. He was impressed by Jesus' mind, so Zacchaeus requested that Joseph allow Jesus to study under him. He promised to teach Jesus his letters and to respect his elders and love other children. So Zacchaeus was able to present the letters, Alpha through Omega, to Jesus. Jesus' response to the teacher was surprising. Jesus accused Zacchaeus of being ignorant and a hypocrite. Jesus began to describe the first letter, Alpha, to Zacchaeus. Jesus began a detailed description of Alpha in shape, in form, in stroke, and in symbolism. Zacchaeus was at a loss for words. He began to relate to others what a fool he had been to drag Jesus into this situation. He begged Joseph to take Jesus home. Zacchaeus said he could not bear the way Jesus looked at him. 
I have deceived myself. I thought I would be the teacher and he would be the student. I don't even understand him. Zacchaeus said he was embarrassed. Please, Joseph, just take Jesus home. Others began to encourage Zacchaeus, and Jesus just laughed and told them he was from above. From that point on, no one wanted to make Jesus angry for fear of being harmed. So let's stop right there, and let's hear what you've got to say about the infancy gospel of, uh, of Thomas. That doesn't sound like the Jesus I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't sound like the Jesus in your in in your gospels. Right. Okay? But it does sound like the Jesus in this gospel because that is the Jesus in this gospel. Right. And right. those writings right. existed back then before long before the Bible was canonized, just like the others do. These stories aren't really any more outrageous than the ones we've come to uh, to love and and know. Uh -huh. So Except that they're negative. Well, <laughs> Some of them. It doesn't, like I said, that that isn't the Jesus that I learned about at all. And I can't imagine, I mean, if he had these powers, quote unquote, that meant that he was from above and he had no sin. If he had no sin, then how, why was he going around killing people? That's not a sin. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. It sounds, uh, sound, that one sounds made up. Well, so does, but so do the ones that we have. Yeah, not, at least they're nicer. <laughs> I, I, I think what we do is we say to ourselves, the stories we know sound normal because we've been taught them all our lives. Right, right. And we hear these stories and they shock us. We cannot solve an argument between two supernatural stories. Jan says, Jesus surely acted up. And then she says, I could believe these stories because Jesus supposedly had issues with the money changers, etc., Colleen says, yes, like an episode on V where Billy Mummy sent townspeople into TV land. Parents <laughs> today would want to have Jesus removed from town as he seemed to harm those he played with. <laughs> Can approve or disprove these stories? <clears throat> and Jan says, he didn't play nice. <laughs> yeah. And so that's what will happen tonight. I promise you that's what's going to happen tonight is we're going to talk about these stories as if they were real. And, the, and, the, and we're going to do it because we talk about the stories that we know in the Christian Bible as if they were real. If I ask people, what happened Pinocchio if he lied? And invariably, people would say, his nose grew. <laughs> Without ever it crossing their That's mind, cool. there is no Pinocchio, there is no lie to tell, and there is no nose to grow. This is, this is not the picture of the Son of God that yeah. the Christian religion paints. And I can understand why they didn't want to include this gospel in their holy book. So they, all of these ex-canonical gospels were written back there in those centuries when they were hammering out the Bible. It seems obvious to us today that the ones we have are the right ones to have and these are the wrong ones to have. But we have to think through that. What we have to realize is that maybe we just got really used to the ones we have. Colleen says she's wondering how Mary and Joseph taught or punished Jesus. You know, what Jesus said was, you know I'm yours, uh, and don't give me a problem. That's what Jan <laughs> said. Maybe he was afraid of him, too. Colleen said, what did she say? Very carefully, I assume. <laughs> yeah, how did, they, how did they deal with him? Very carefully, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go into segment two. Let me go into, because we're almost to the top of the hour. Let me go into segment two. The fourth story in the infancy gospel of Thomas... It's a simple story. Jesus was playing at someone's house, and they were upstairs or perhaps on the roof. But one of the children fell and was killed, and the rest of the kids ran off, perhaps to their own parents. But Jesus was left there standing alone. The parents of the dead child showed up and accused Jesus of throwing their child off. So Jesus jumped to the ground himself, and he went up to the child and called him by name. And Jesus said, did I throw you down? And the child looked up at Jesus and said, no, but you sure raised me up. So everyone was amazed and they praised Jesus. Fifth story in the Empathy Gospel of Thomas. This is another short one. There was a man chopping wood. On one swing, he missed with his axe 
and his axe cut his foot in two. He died, or he was dying, from blood loss. A crowd gathered, including Jesus, and the child Jesus made his way through the crowd and touched the man's foot. Jesus told the man to rise up and finish chopping his wood and remember him that, that he healed him. So the man was healed. The crowd began saying, this child possesses the spirit of God. Okay, that's a little bit simpler, a little bit neater. Yeah. The sixth story in the infancy gospel of Thomas, at the age of six, Jesus' mother gave him a pot to go fetch some water. But as Jesus made his way through a crowd, he broke the pot. So a resourceful Jesus took his coat off and filled it with water. When his mother saw what he had done, she kissed him. She kept such miracles and things like that to herself. The seventh story in the infancy gospel of Thomas, at the age of eight, Jesus went out to sow grain with Joseph, his dad. While his father sowed, Jesus sowed just one seed. From this one grain, he was able to, to call all the poor people to the threshing floor and feed them. And Joseph was able to take home what was left over. The eighth story in the infancy gospel of Thomas, uh, as we know, Jesus' father was a woodcrafter. He was making something for a wealthy customer when two pieces did not match as they should. One was too short. So Jesus told his dad to lay them down side by side. Jesus then grabbed the end of the shorter one and stretched it to make the longer one. Joseph then embraced Jesus and told him how lucky he was to have such a child. The ninth story, Joseph found another teacher and handed Jesus over to him. The teacher promised to teach Jesus both Greek and Hebrew. The teacher uh, was also aware of the previous problem of tutoring Jesus and was afraid. The teacher taught Jesus the letters for quite some time and received no response from Jesus at all. Finally, the same retort from Jesus came. Jesus said to his teacher, You tell me about Alpha, and then I will tell you about Beta. The teacher got very angry and then struck Jesus on the head. Jesus cursed the teacher, and the teacher fell over. Then Jesus ran home to Joseph. At this point, Joseph commands Mary. Mary, don't let him out of the house. <laughs> lest, <laughs> anymore. Don't let him out of the house anymore, lest those who make him angry die. <laughs> the tenth story in the, in the infancy gospel of Thomas it said, so a third teacher becomes available. This one is a personal friend of Joseph. He offered to have Jesus come to his school. Joseph said, if you have the courage, have at it. So the teacher took him, but was much afraid. And when Jesus got there, he saw a book lying on a desk. He picked it up. And instead of reading the book, he spoke in the Holy Spirit. There was a crowd gathering, and they were amazed at the maturity of Jesus' words. Joseph heard about it, and he panicked, for fear another teacher would be struck down. <laughs> when Jesus got there, the teacher told Joseph, I took him to be a student, but he is already full of wisdom. Please take him home. Joseph. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus laughed and said, because you have spoken correctly, the teacher I already struck down will be cured. And so the other teacher in the other story came back to life. Joseph promptly took him home. The 11th story in the infancy gospel of Thomas. Jesus' brother James was gathering wood for his father. Jesus followed along. While James was collecting the wood, a snake bit him on the hand. As he lay in pain, dying from the bite, Jesus breathed on the wound. The pain ceased. The snake exploded. <laughs> James, <laughs> James went on about his business, uh, chopping wood. Okay, so let's stop right there and, and let's see what y'all, because I see the chat room running over here. Um, so let's see what you got to say. Uh, well, when we started on the, I don't know, the second cycle of Jesus's 
talents, where he decided to be a little bit nicer. Uh, Jesus, Jan said Jesus had some reputation as a child, according to this gospel. Colleen says, very true, Jan. Better outcomes now, not petrifying or killing others, <laughs> except for teachers, perhaps. <laughs> Jan says, I'm feeling so much better about my rebelliousness in comparison <laughs> to Jesus, at least according to this gospel. And Colleen says, me too. <laughs> we weren't bad at all. <laughs> uh, grim fairy tales are beat. <laughs> The infancy gospel of, of Thomas paints Jesus as a typical child, mischievous child. With superpowers. With su well, but the thing <laughs> is, we paint him as an adult with superpowers, okay? Right. All right, so that's my point. My point is, be careful here, he just how critical you get. Place to place <laughs> Say what? He didn't fly from place to place, he walked. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, don't tug on Superman's cape, don't spit into the wind, don't pull the mask <laughs> off the old Lone Ranger, and don't mess around with Jesus. So anyway, here we go. The 12th story in the infancy gospel of Thomas was one of Joseph and Mary's neighbors had a child that got sick and died, and Jesus heard about it. When he found the child, he touched it and told it to live, as its mother continued to cry. Then the child laughed aloud, and Jesus says, give him some milk. And as you might imagine, a crowd had been gathering. This child Jesus is either God or an angel, they said. Then Jesus went off to play with the other kids. Tell me in the Christian religion, if we don't teach people that if you don't get along with Jesus, you're going to suffer and die. Right, right. No, we don't tell people mm -hmm. that? Of course we do. Yeah. Now, what you got on chat, Joni? Colleen says, I always seem to be in trouble growing up. I can imagine him as a teen turning water into wine when too young. And then Jan says, a, a crowd is gathering, of course. He was pretty amazing, parentheses, strange in these gospels, this gospel. But if you think about it, rebelliousness is a natural progression through maturity, parentheses. However, I don't think this pertains to murder. <laughs> no. Colleen says, thank goodness he learned to control. I would imagine you couldn't turn water into wine until you, after your 21st birthday, and then they would check your, and then they would check your ID, I think. Uh, the 13th story in the infancy gospel of Thomas, there was a huge uproar at a construction site. Hearing the excitement, Jesus went there. There he found a construction worker dead. So Jesus reached and took his hand, took the construction worker's hand. He told him to get up and go back to work. The man immediately got up and praised Jesus. Again, there was a crowd. The crowd said Jesus was from heaven. Uh, all his life, he's been saving people, and he'll continue saving people all his life. And then finally, the 14th story in the infancy gospel of Thomas, the very last thing. Jesus is 12 years old. It is a traditional story, also in the canon of the Christian Bible. Joseph and Mary and others leave Jerusalem together for home after the Passover. They think Jesus is with someone else that's also traveling with them. After traveling for about a day, they realize no Jesus. So they went back to Jerusalem. It took three days to find Jesus. There he was in a temple, in the temple, a 12-year-old teaching the elders. So Mary asked him, Jesus, what do you think you are doing? We have been worried sick. And so Jesus answered her, shouldn't I be doing my father's business? The leaders asked her if she is the child's mother. And she, of course, said, yes, I am. Blessed are you among women, they said. Of course, you know the ending. Jesus goes home with his parents. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and stature and grace, mm -hmm. to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And that's the he end. And didn't kill anybody else, right? No, he didn't kill anybody else right then. <laughs> so that's the end of the Gospel of, of Thomas. As far as the way is concerned, I really don't see much there to talk about in terms of the way. But if you see some connection, I, of course, would be very interested in, in hearing it. You've got some chats, I think, Joni? Jan says, I put on a mini skirt to go to church as they were in style. My father told me that skirt was unacceptable attire and I should change. 
I refused to change and did not go to church. Hallelujah, I won. <laughs> <laughs> yep, she did. Jesus had to learn, as we all do, how to control his temper, live a good life, and be helpful. That's Colleen. What do you think about all this, Carol? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I was just thinking about, you know, I was not, I was a very obedient child. Very obedient. I was sort of like Joni. You know, it was goody two shoes. Except for one time when I was about seven years old. And I was at the, out in the backyard at my grandmother's house playing with some other kids. My mother came to the door and she said, Carol, it's time for you to come in. I didn't do it. She came again and said, it's time for you to come in. Didn't do it. She said, I'm going to give you till 10 to get in this house. And I said, one, two, three, four. <laughs> well, I did not end well. I did not win. <laughs> no. No, I know your mother. I doubt you did win. <laughs> <laughs> no, I doubt, I doubt that very much. <laughs> As of 14, it was downhill. Uh, well, you know, I had reasons. My father committed suicide, and um, I had a boyfriend that date raped me. And this all happened when I was 14. And I wasn't goody two shoes anymore. But didn't get you anything. <laughs> yeah, and I, I um, of course, resented my pastor because he said that it was must have been my fault at some point. in dating a guy that was two years older than I was and that kind of stuff. So that's when I started veering away from religion. Yeah. Well, when you, when you realize that religion was wrong, that's who he was. I don't remember resenting going to church. Do you, Joni? No. No. Oh, I look forward to it because that's where that was, my friends where were. Was. <laughs> that, yeah, that's where my friends were. That's where mm -hmm. the people that I was going to go out and eat with were. That's where, I mean... That was our culture. I mean, it, um, it was more of your so social center than the school was. Jen says she well. knows many kids who slipped out the other door, but Colleen says we never, we could never do that. My dad stood by the doors. <laughs> 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 no, I was in trouble so much, so often that I never used my given name because that meant I was in trouble. <laughs> that was Colleen. <laughs> and Colleen says your dad must have thought you were going to escape. Colleen started using my real name as an adult. Jan, he knew you would try, and I would. As, as far as as far as this gospel goes, I, I, you're right. I've been thinking about it, and it is as believable as anything else. It just doesn't fit with the no, Christian no. concept. No, I'll get I'll give you that. It doesn't it doesn't fit with what we know. When they said these things, it didn't sound as shocking to them as it sounds to us. Well, I had always thought that in that that temple left at the temple story was the men were traveling together in a, in a walking group and the women were traveling together in a walking group the day, mm -hmm. and they thought they were with each other. A 12 year old child could be with the men or the women, or at least a male child could be. So they didn't miss him for a day. And then they took him a day to go back to get him. And then they took him a day to find him. He's not stupid. He knew that yeah. <laughs> he knew he had time. And I may do the Gospel of Peter next, but it's mainly a passion story mm -hmm. uh, about the crucifixion and resurrection. But in it, we have Jesus who's so tall, his head's up in the clouds, and we have a, a, a huge cross that's walking behind him and talking. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you exactly, but that's just... I, I often have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see the cross there, Carol. <laughs> it's not with me today, but oh, tell you tomorrow. I really love teaching the way, and I think we ought, ought to always come back to the way within each each one of these. And maybe one of the reasons that it shocks you is you think in terms of the way. Jesus sounded like he didn't know the way. <laughs> I mean, it, well, it, maybe that was when he was learning it. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. You see what I mean, though. It it's yeah, oh, yeah. It shakes you up just a little bit. But I think when, one of the things that I think we should get out of doing this and going through some of these ex-canonical books is that we should, get, we should understand the fact that, that the environment in that day, hundreds of years before the Bible was canonized, okay, hundreds of years before there was any list that lists the books that we call the Bible. Um, but in those days, they were talking about a lot of things in a lot of different ways okay 
And so the Christian church became what it is through a period of centuries. If you want to know what, what Orthodox are and what heretics are, it's pretty simple. The Orthodox are the ones that won, and the heretics are the ones that lost. <laughs> it's not which one's right or which one's wrong. It's which one won and which one lost. And when you look at it that way, you realize it has, that has to be true. It's, it's true about other things, too. You know, look at politics. There are names you can no longer remember. Why? They didn't, <laughs> they didn't win. win. Colleen <laughs> said, this was fun. Jesus became more human with these stories. And Jan says, I agree, Colleen. Oh, and I'm good with that. I'm good with that because I believe Jesus is a real figure. I believe Jesus lived. And I, believed, I believe that what he taught caused there to be a following that they, they labeled people of the way. Mm -hmm. And in the process, there is something there to find about life. And it doesn't have to be tested in the first century. You can ask yourself, if I go by these principles that he taught the people of the way concerning contentment in life and living in community with other people, that those principles can be tested in the 21st century. And I agree. For some people, yes. they're going to say, no, it don't work for me. But other people are going to say, you know what, I believe it does. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm one of those people that's going to say yes. To the extent that I can, that I can control myself, <laughs> I find that being in the way that appears to be the, the contiguous line of thought of Jesus, that that contiguous line of thought will actually make your life more content and you can live in community with other people better. So I think we're going to close out the show. We thank you for being here. We love you all. We appreciate the participation. Carol being on air, and we appreciate Colleen and Jan's words on the chat room. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the gospel, the infant gospel of Thomas, the, the life of a, of a childhood Jesus. I try to figure out what, as Joni says, I feel like I always do better for you if I pick one that I'm passionate about. If I pick one I want to do, okay? If it bores me, I'm going to bore you, <laughs> okay? And, and I don't want to do that. Appreciate all y'all. Have a great week. We love you. And we'll be back again next Thursday evening at Way to Be TV, where there's a better way to be than atheist or theist. <laughs> <laughs>